So today we're going to talk about base coating and I'm using this model here. He's a chaos cultist from Games Workshop. I like him. He's a nice sort of general wasteland warrior post-apocalyptic type with a bit of a mutant twist. Um, so he's a good model to have in a generic sci-fi collection. So uh, I'm going to do some base coating on this guy today and uh, these are the paints I'm going to use. I also wear one of these when I'm doing my painting, as you'll see. Uh, it's a latex glove and it just stops me getting finger marks or putting oil from my hands onto the miniature. I'm using a size 1 brush from Rosemary & Co. And I'm going to try and explain as I go over the base coating today my approach to base coating which I call the reverse onion technique. Uh, this basically means picking out those areas of the miniature that are closest to the center. The obvious ones being flesh, obviously, because that's always closest to the middle, uh, but less obviously sort of lower level clothes, trousers, vests, uh, that kind of thing. So, Having done his flesh and his trousers, therefore, I'm working outwards then onto the overcoat, which I'm painting in a nice, dusty, generic grey. Uh, this is Mechanica Standard Grey. It's one of Games Workshop's new range of paints. Well, I call it new, uh, obviously, because I'm used to the old set. It's been out a couple of years now. Very good. You'll notice uh, I'm taking paint directly from the pot. A lot of painters will say, never ever do this. Always put your paint onto a palette, mix it with some water. Um, I am going to do that later, but uh, I actually find that some paints, particularly new paints that haven't got blobby yet, are absolutely fine for painting straight from the pot, as long as you use them in small quantities. This paint is an old Citadel paint by contrast to the Mechanica Standard Grey. This is Mechrite Red and this really does need a bit of watering down because it's become quite a, a blobby, messy paint. In fact, yeah, there's there's a bit of old dry paint inside here that I'm just going to pick out. There we go, got rid of that. And I'm going to add a bit of water to that. Now, there's a lot of discussion over what sort of consistency you want on this water but it needs to flow smoothly that's the the main thing it needs to be drawn easily up the bristles of the brush and flow smoothly out onto the miniature without flooding away and uh, and going onto areas that you don't want it on uh, you'll see when you water paint down that it goes on quite thinly in fact you'll see in a moment that you can you can see quite clearly the black primer coat there we are still showing through the red, which is why I'm now going over it with a second coat uh, to try and thicken up that finish. And in fact it's not a bad thing at all when you're base coating to be applying thin coats several times. It does take a little bit longer but it does give a very smooth uniform finish uh, that doesn't detract from the detail of the original sculpt. Just finishing up the red. There we go. Now this next paint, Rakar Flesh, another new colour from Games Workshop Citadel range. This is an interesting illustration because I'm going to use this in several places. First on his mask. And here, sorry, on his rifle barrel, uh, he's got strapping webbing around his rifle barrel. And he's also got strapping uh, what's called putties uh, around his ankles. And I'm using the same base colour on all of those areas, even though actually these areas are going to be quite different colours when I've finished painting this miniature. And we'll cover that in the next uh tutorial that I'm going to look at washes and using washes to change base colours. There you go, I'm just adding another coat and doing the webbing on his hands. 
Okay, he's pretty much finished at this point. So uh, I'm going to finish off his base now with, again, Mechanica Standard Grey. Um, the thing with this, I, I apply it straight from the pot in quite large quantities. As you can see, I've already sanded the base, which means it's got a very high texture. So I apply the paint absolutely neat from the pot and then load up my brush with plenty of water, which then forces that paint to flow around the texture on the base. Don't want to go too heavy on the water. Uh, then when you're finished, there's an argument over whether you should or should not paint base rims the same colour as the rest of the base. In this case, for the purposes of speed and convenience, I'm going to. A couple of little pieces of sand there escaped from the top of the base that I have just pulled off. It's worth watching out that those don't stick because that really ruins the look of a base rim if you let sand stick to it from the base. It really uh, detracts from the whole thing. All right. Finish that one off and... That is him, really. Base coating is done.